he has vein tubes smooth for his pleasure. That's right. I've been away for a while. I was on a deep space mission to recover some strange eggs on a derelict planet. Unfortunately, a friend of mine had a parasite attached to his face and ended up dying from some weird creature bursting out of his chest. But we kind of didn't care because we were listening to the new PS Vein Horizon tubes. In this case, the KT-88. In all seriousness, guys, sorry, I've been MIA for a while. I have been readjusting my nutrition, and that was leading to me having very little creativity slash patience. Plus, I've been very busy at work, my real job, that is, not hi-fi. Um, but hey, it worked. I think I lost like 30 pounds. Feel great. Anyways, today, PS Vein, electron tubes, KT-88. All right, PS Vein, KT-88 tubes. Right away, what I notice the most is there must be a much, much better flow of current in these tubes compared to the regular PS vein tubes because first thing I notice is the energy and power in the base was a nice improvement from the regular PS vein tube. I'd say the base actually improved in room easily uh, by two to three decibels even. In this case specifically, when I try them with the Galleon TS120, which I believe still ships stock with the regular PS Vein tubes. I'm not sure if it's that or the TAD anymore. doesn't matter. But I did listen to the regular PS Vein tubes in this amplifier. This amplifier is already known for its strength and energy in the bass. When using the Horizon tubes, that energy in the bass was a little bit amped up, but in a good way. It was sharp, it was detailed, and it was controlled. The second thing I noticed the mid-range is a little bit more forward, which gives also the impression that your soundstage, or my soundstage, I don't know why I say your, my soundstage actually felt like the singer was a little bit closer to me than what I'm used to generally. And actually, this was also a difference with the regular PS Vane. The regular PS Vane, my soundstage usually puts the singer and the sound, most of the instruments in the soundstage behind the speakers and with a wraparound effect. In this case, the instruments, basically whatever was in focus so to speak and mid-range press and more in the mid-range centric um felt like it was a little bit closer to me not close to the sense where i felt that like with macintosh equipment but um i'd say like a 20 to 30 percent closer to me um from what it used to be so good thing bad thing doesn't matter it was still nice um the sense of detail and air is definitely there you have, I think, a, an improvement also over the regular PS Vein tubes in terms of layering, transparency, depth of sound stage is also improved as well. Probably because I think that the current flow based on the type of materials they use on the plates of these tubes as opposed to their regular PS Vein tubes is of a different material, which I think also they're using a material that is of slightly higher quality and thus possibly better. Um, um, bah, 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 bah. Well, that fumbling buffoon is looking for his words. Let me share what PS Vane says about the Horizon series, as the series of tubes are equipped with a different anode coating technology and new base materials. So this new coating, HPCX, is a technology to increase the anode and the output power of the tube while also absorbing excess gases so it extends the lifespan. But the bases are made with an increased density ceramic, which impacts conductivity and dampening to enhance the overall stability. Another thing I also noticed that's happening is that there seems to be a improvement in tonal balance between the highs, mids, and the bass compared to the regular PS vein tubes. Um, I find that the regular PS vein tubes, depending on the system, you can experience a little bit, a little bit of hard, harshness, or if not a harshness, a little bit of tilt in the top end. Maybe that's because the mids and the bass in terms of tonal balance between the three, the, the mids and the bass might be slightly lower in their projection and presence compared to the highs with the regular PS Vane. This with the Horizon series, from what I can see with the KT-88s after a few weeks, um, that issue doesn't seem to be there. It seems like everything's nice and balanced. Uh, it's not harsh. Um, it is really nice to listen to. I won't categorize the mid-range necessarily as super warm, but it's there enough that you will have a little hint of warmth um, in tracks that are heavy in the mid-range, aka a Johnny Cash type of voice. 
definitely I noticed that. Um, essentially, the only downside I can see with these tubes for, for people that might not be quite patient is I found, for some reason, the break-in time or the burn-in time on these KT88s took a long time. Uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, it took a solid month for me to uh, break them in. So what was happening in that month? So um, day one, beautiful. Day two to five, uh, it sounded really thin, sounded a very harsh in the highs. Uh, the second and third week, um, it felt generally more muffled, uh, felt like the bass was overpowering. Um, with occasional days where it felt like things were balanced again, you got like this idea of how things are going to sound when they burn in. And that's little hint, guys, when you're burning in through the process, when you get those days where things just sound great, but you're only under 50 hours of burning on the tubes, that's just giving you a sample of what it will sound like when it's done. Uh, so don't give up. Just keep playing them four or five hours a day. Give them a good break. Don't just let this run for 20 hours straight. Four or, five hours, four or five hours intermittently, don't blast it way too loud. Stay in the 70 to 80 decibel of ambient room listening, which is always, I find, is a good idea. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so after, after week two and week three, where the bass sounded muffled on the bad days, whereas the uh, week one, at the end of week one, things sounded thin and bright, um, in the end of the fourth week, things had stabilized. And now, now I can tell you, certainly it's been a few weeks where there's been no difference in tonal balance to my ears. Um, it's sounding much more balanced, much more neutral. Um, and to counter effect that, to make sure that my brain wasn't just getting used to this reality, um, when I go back to my 300B setup or go back to my 211 setup, um, where things are tonally balanced to the way I like and love, which is my reference, um, and come back and comparing to the KT88s, Yes, it was definitely, definitely much better and balanced compared to when I was doing those comparisons early on in the burn-in process. So when I felt like it was, when it was really harsh or bright, I would go back to 211, 300B, and the contrast was so massive that it, it, was, it was just crazy. And then when it got bloated and too much bass, again, would go back to the 211, 300Bs and realize, whoa, there's way too much bass right now with this KT88. It's like eating away, eating away at the details in the air. So there you go. Those are the PS Vein Horizon KT88 tubes. Thank you very much for tuning in. This was a short one. For those of you that have a short attention span, this was probably awesome. Have a good one. No, it's not over. Okay. Uh, a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a real talk. Uh, listen. The more the more I play around with tubes these days um and with different gear there's something that i'm starting to realize the better the tube the more the voicing of your component is going to stand out is going to reveal itself so some tubes will generally probably sound warmer some tubes might sound brighter i'm starting to realize that um in the everyday tube world, that's part of the fun of tube rolling because it's a gamble. It really is a gamble. Um, even if you think that one brand sounds a certain way, if you get a different revision of that model or that brand uh, from a different production date, production year, I've experienced where it is the opposite sometimes, where I've experienced Mullards, where Mullards had a really nice warmth in the mid-range and lots of um, lower mid-range weight or i've gotten newer mullards and that is not the case where it's a much more neutral much more uh, tonally balanced tube and i think that all has to do with the equipment we're using and it all has to do to a degree to individual tubes in their burning process so in the reading that I've been doing and discussions with some engineers who work in the tube world, AKA some that manufacture tube world, some that cryo treat the tube world and people that also sell tubes in the tube world. There's a little consistency between some of them uh, in terms of this. Burning in a tube uh, essentially is the flow of electrons that are being faced with impurities in the material of the plates. And thus, like 
anything natural in life will start to find a path of least resistance. Because these impurities, if I had to dumb it down for myself to try to understand um, what I'm reading, okay, I didn't dumb it down for myself. An engineer dumbed it down for me. Um, think of it as speed bumps or potholes on the road where the electrons are on the road and they're going to their destination. As there's potholes and speed bumps, they, which are the impurities in the material, they have to find ways to avoid these. And as they're finding ways to avoid these on the road, they're always using the same parts of the road. And what happens over time is that carves a type of path in the material for them to flow through. Thus, once that path is properly carved, then the speed bumps and the potholes become less of an issue for the electrons to flow. That being said, there is a big difference in flow of traffic on a road if the traffic has to all share the same little linear path as opposed to using the entire road. So sometimes, based on how that burn-in happens or how much impurities just happen to be in the materials of that specific tube at the time, you could end up with potentially some distortion, tube distortion out of this. And this distortion could be impacting the highs, could be impacting the mids, or could be impacting the performance of the base. Either way, when this happens, you could potentially have a tube that is going to emphasize a little bit in the mids, a little bit in the highs, a little bit in the base. But when you have a tube that is of super high quality, that's using very high purity of materials and high quality construction, AKA you're paying for this, then strangely, the burn-in process does not last very long, if at all, and you end up with simply a strong emphasis over what the components in the gear you're using the tubes is. More on that note, when a designer voices a piece of gear, meaning he's gonna choose what are the passive solid state components that are that he wants or she wants to use in the equipment the capacitors the resistors these all have a sonic characteristic to them when you change them well depending on the tubes the designer picks to be his standard tubes that will ship with this piece of gear. And you got to remember, a lot of consideration goes into this. You can't just pick the best tubes that you want. You need to make sure that with all your pieces of gear that will ship out to your customers, you are capable of handling a steady flow of inventory, that you're capable of quality testing them, and to make sure that your amplifier is always working ideally. So if you naturally pick a tube that fit your business criteria, not just your sonic criteria, because both factors matter, if a tube is um, more uh, bright and transparent, which is possible, then it's possible that the designer will voice its amplifier via capacitors and, and resistors or chokes uh, in a way to counteract this to try to make his amplifier sound a little bit more neutral or more to their sonic taste by having components that might be emphasizing a little bit more of the mid band or uh, the flow in the bass. Now, once they've done that and you get the amplifier, if you decide, I'm going to take these tubes out and I'm going, because I'm a fan of warmth and I'm going to go get some new old stock mullards, let's say, that are supposed to sound super warm or some old RCA black plated type stuff, put them in this amp. Yeah, your mid range is probably going to skyrocket because the passive components the designer put in there, remember to counteract the fact that the tubes that he was going to ship these out with are going to be maybe a little bit on the brighter side. Now you're ending up with a ton of mid range warmth. Problem with that is that it's going to come at a cost. It's possible that it comes at a cost of potentially layering in your soundstage or feeling of depth or feeling of air. It's all a big spider web, right? So when you pull too hard on one side of the spider web, the other, the, the, the other side of the spider web might tear off. Keep this in mind. Um, I'm deep diving a little bit more into this, and I'm going to be, I think, acquiring a tube tester. Uh, to see if I can correlate any of these measurements to the theories I just shared that were based on uh, my research and uh, plenty of discussions with uh, various people in the tube world. Now I'm done for real. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Have a good one. The Horizon 274B rectifier. Next video, let's talk about rectifiers. Oh!